Hey, Brian. Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's great. Great to see you. Uh, folks, we've got Brian Niedermeyer here, and uh, all of you remember him from uh, last year. Brian, if, if not in the top three, he is – he may be the best recruiter in America. If you don't believe it, watch the replay of his number 11 Saturday night. He had a great time speaking to us last week. He's a favorite of the Knoxville Quarterback Club. Let's give a warm welcome to our linebackers coach and recruiter of the year, Brian Niedermeyer. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Obviously, you know, it's a little bit different with Zoom now. Uh, I'd rather be there if I could, but, you know, here I am behind the screen. I think times are different in 2020, you know, for all of us, and especially for football and, and everything the kids have gone through and, you know, how they've practiced and had to get ready and, and go through all the adversity of really not knowing if we're going to play or, you know, what we're going to do, but they've done a great job of staying consistent day in and day out of, of just focusing on, you know, dominating their portion of, of the team and doing what they're supposed to do every day. They've done a great job with, you know, handling COVID and, you know, being around each other and social distancing and being safe and wearing their masks, you know, which isn't easy. I mean, we all realize that, but, you know, just to avoid the spread throughout the team and, and university, they've taken great precaution and, you know, Coach Pruitt set up a great system for us to be successful in, in the way we've scheduled practices and scheduled workouts and everything like that. I think we've done a really good job, you know, not only with our team, but on the recruiting trail as well. So it's it's been different, but it's been good. And, you know, it's changing every day. And we, Coach Pruitt's really helped us, you know, bridge the gap between what we used to do and what we do now. Uh, Coach, can so. you tell us about your position group, uh, and uh, then we'll, we'll we've got a bunch of people that, that got their hands up and want to ask some questions. But tell us about your position group first, please. Well, obviously, you know Henry had a pretty good game. He, you know, he we all have some things to work on, but you know Henry is is a great leader and he leads by example. But he also you know speaks up and demands things from within the position group. Uh, he's, he's been everything that I've asked for and and more. So I enjoy coaching him. You know, the next one is Jeremy Banks. You know, he's done everything we've asked since he's been back. He is a phenomenal talent. Uh, he is a good kid, you know, and, and he has changed in, in so many ways since he first stepped on campus. If, if you knew him then and knew him now, you'd be amazed. He, he's a deeply faith-based individual who is, is – such a good kid at heart and he plays so hard and he plays the game the right way. We just got to clean up a few, few emotional layers. And then uh, Kavars Crouch obviously is such a talented guy, another deeply faith-based guy. And, and he's so talented. This is obviously his first year playing inside linebacker. You know, he played defense last year at outside backer, didn't play as much, but he never played it in high school at all really he was a you know obviously a talented running back an unbelievable talent so he's kind of settling into the role you know being able to make all the calls being able to do all the things you know this defense is a NFL style defense so a lot is asked of those inside linebackers to set the front to make coverage adjustments as well to do all the things that you need you know they're the quarterback of the defense truly so you know, for him to transition in, it's been a good transition. We're still working, but, you know, he's made great strides. And even within the last game, great strides. Um, Aaron Beasley, who, again, another running back from high school uh, and safety now has moved down. This is, you know, really his first full year at inside linebacker. He's a very talented guy. He can run sideline to sideline. He, he's – slippery in the tackle box it's hard for guys to get their hands on him you know it, it's again it's about execution and for him he's really been focusing on footwork and executing at the point of attack um an older guy kind of the veteran in the group is Solon Page uh he is a blessing to have in the room this is an older guy that that knows the system and and kind of has a feel for 
the temperature of the room and getting guys motivated and being a leader. You know, he, he's kind of an unspoken hero and he's just such a pleasure to have in the room for me, especially as a first year inside linebacker coach. It's been great. And then uh, we got the young guy, Martavius French, who is, you know, straight out of Whitehaven freshman year, got a lot of talent, a bigger bodied guy. He's about 247 pounds right now. He's, he's rugged and he plays really hard. But again, just getting him in the system and, and letting him bridge the gap from high school to college has been good for us, you know, just so he sees the speed of the game. And, and he's made a lot of contributions. He was a scout team player of the week. Um, so he's done well. We, we enjoy having him here and, and letting him work. Yeah. Yes, sir. Brian, the question is, what unit defensively uh, uh, played the best Saturday in your judgment and which one uh, needs to improve the most? Well, if you're going to ask me, the inside linebackers always need to improve the most. I can tell you that right now. Because, you know, again, quarterback of the defense. Um, I thought the outside linebackers played well. Um, obviously, DeAndre uh, Johnson had two and a half sacks. Uh, I thought Alante Taylor played really well. Um, you know, I thought that – him, he made some huge plays setting the edge and, and some plays on, on third down and deep balls and things like that. Um, you know, I think some of the interior linemen played well. I think we all need to get better. We're all trying to focus on getting better. But for most improvement, it's by far and away the inside linebackers just because we control so much and, and we make the – we're kind of the engine of the car right there. Coach, what about the freshmen? Which freshman su uh, has surprised you so far, if any? We got a lot of really good freshmen. I mean, we have a bunch of offensively, defensively. You know, you talk about guys like Keyshawn Lawrence. You talk about guys, you know, Jalen Hyatt, all these different people. I mean, if you look at it, you know, uh, Jimmy Holiday, obviously, and, and Jimmy Callaway came up with the last play of the game in terms of special teams. I think that's one of the bigger plays in the game. I mean, they, they forced the turnover on special teams, pushing the guy into the punt and then recovering the fumble. I mean, that's two big-time plays by freshmen right there, you know, and, and on special teams, which is where guys can contribute. And people don't necessarily notice as much as, you know, a quarterback or a receiver or a DB or a linebacker. But that, that special teams role is so huge for us. You know, in the last seven games, you'll look at the, the special teams productions and what we've done, and I think it's really the difference for us. And Coach Pruitt puts a huge emphasis on special teams and, guys playing it and starters playing it and, and the best players are always going to play. So I'd say those two guys just in terms of that game. Yeah. Two more. How's that? Two more. Yes. So uh, the defense skipped the right man in the second to South Carolina. It came at a good time because we had left the front and they got the ball on our South Carolina. What did they do? The question is uh, the defense stiffened up in, in the second half. <laughs> Uh, and second, second, second possession. What did we do differently uh, defensively uh, to, to, to quell their momentum? Well, you know, anytime an uh, offense comes out, there's always an opening script. Whenever an offense, you know, starts the game, they have a certain amount of plays where they're, they've rehearsed these plays repeatedly for, you know, the last three or four days, and they're going to have an opening script that's always a little bit different. It always has exotic plays or things you haven't necessarily seen. So once you get past that opening script, you really settle into the game plan. I think it, it for us it was, okay, we have a few minor adjustments you know, here and there. And I, I think once you settle into the game plan and you settle into what your, your preparation is for their plays, because you don't know necessarily on that first drive what's coming your way, especially off a new offensive coordinator in a new um, system at the school. I think it was really good by Coach Ansley and Coach Pruitt to adjust and say, hey, this is what we're getting now. We kind of understand. Let's go to this specific game plan for, for this personnel and what they're running. You know, we, we're so multiple – it was just kind of figuring out what they were going to do. It was only going to be a certain amount of options, but once we figured out what they were going to do after that first drive, that allowed us to, to adjust and change. One more. What about this upcoming game against Missouri? Yes. Uh, Brian, uh, two things, please. Uh, one, if you would uh, comment about 
the upcoming game against Missouri. And then two, uh, although I didn't tell you this before, we're going to honor John Majors, uh, kind of have a John Majors uh, a remembrance here. So if you wanted to say a word or two about John Majors, and, uh, and before you sign off, we appreciate so much you coming. I told our group uh, here earlier that if you spend two minutes around you, you know why you're a great recruiter because uh, you're a great guy. So we're glad uh, we're glad you're here. So if you would answer uh, answer uh, about Missouri, and then if you've got something to say about John Majors, and uh, uh, I bet we'll give you a great applause, and you can go back to getting ready for the Missouri Tigers. I guess I should give you the old Bill Belichick. Uh, all our focus is on Missouri. <laughs> we we hope we 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 hope to be the best prepared team and to play well. So, uh, I I feel like Coach Pruitt paid somebody to ask that question, so that's that's the answer we're gonna get. Uh, and about Coach Majors, I did not know Coach Majors the man. Obviously, I only knew Coach Majors the legend. You know, being 31, I was not privy to a lot of his years. You know, and. Growing up in Alaska, we only had one TV channel uh, when I was a kid, so it was rough. But um, obviously, you know, all the stories come through, and you, you hear all the things, you realize all the winning, you know, and, and all the things he's done. But what, what echoes through is the kind of person he was and the impact he had on all of his players and people around the Tennessee community. You know, you think Johnny Majors, you, you think Tennessee immediately, you know, as a player, as a coach, as a person, you know, Tennessee through and through. And that really radiates throughout the program. And, and I think that it, what he did here in bringing Tennessee to another level, you know, at, at that point when, when he first got back it is unbelievable. And I think he set the foundation for a long time to, to renew the dominance that Tennessee had, you know, during his time and, and shortly after he, you know, left. So uh, I think it was so impressive, and, and he was so key and vital to the program and its tradition and its foundation that I'm I'm so glad that we're able to honor him and, and you know, knowing that he's part of this program forever. We'll get your hoodie on and cut off the sleeves. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing shorts right now, so I didn't want to tell anybody, so I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>